time for another bomb pot. Every player puts in $100 each. We're playing seven handed at the moment. If we win, we'll have gotten all the way out of the $6,400 hole that we were in. We look down at pocket queens in the big blind. It's normally one of the worst times to pick up a premium pocket pair because, like I said earlier, one pair of hands rarely win at showdown in bomb pots when there are so many opponents, so you typically have to improve the two pair better. And we do. The dealer puts out queen queen nine rainbow, we flop quads with 700 in the middle and not a damn worry in the world. I've never had quads in a bomb pot before, certainly not during a high stakes session. The only concern of mine is how are we possibly going to get paid when we've got everything. Small blind checks, there's no way that we'll be betting when I'm second to act and all the queens are accounted for. I check, hoping someone will get out of line. No one bites, the checks around. The turn is the eight of spades at least putting a flush draw on the board and completing a possible straight. The small blind checks, I'm a patient guy, I can't let this check through again though, I make a small bet of 200 to get things going. I wouldn't be too surprised if this folds around, I actually think it's the most likely outcome. All hope isn't lost. Rob takes two black chips from his stack and calls in middle position. The hijack and cutoff fold. The button, who we've tangled with multiple times, is considering his options. I told you earlier, he makes aggressive plays at strange times. This would be amazing if he raised here. I don't want to do anything that might tip him off that we've got the absolute nuts. Still, in my head, I'm thinking, please do something wild. He comes through and raises to 1100. This seems like a bluff since we've got all the queens. I don't know if he'd raise with a straight on this board, or maybe he has nines full or eights full. The small blind folds. I was originally thinking that I may not get any customers with my $200 bet. Now that I've gotten called and then raised, I'm thinking about the best way to stack one, or maybe even two players. There's no reason to risk scaring anyone off. We don't need to re-raise for protection. I flat the 1100. Rob can't justify calling for 900 more. He folds. It's down to heads up with a guy who I know is capable of taking huge risks if he sees an opportunity to win a pot. It's the perfect setup. The river is the seven of clubs. It doesn't change much since Jack-10 was already a straight. The button has exactly 5,000 left in his stack. We have him covered. The pot is only 3,100, so it could be tough to get everything. I don't want to risk this checking through since it's highly likely that the opponent is bluffing and may shut down after I called his raise on the turn with another player behind me. I put out a fake blocker bet of 600 to appear as if I'm weak and trying to get to showdown cheaply. I've already seen multiple times today, including earlier in this hand, that the opponent has no aversion to raising. We just need him to take the bait here. If he has air like a missed flush draw, he may make a last ditch effort to try and steal the pot after seeing a weak looking bet. If he has a really strong hand like a full house, or possibly even a straight, he'll probably think that I have trick queens and he can raise for value. Almost no matter what he has, he'll feel some inclination to make it more. He takes the black chips that he's shuffling in his hand, adds it to a much larger stack of black chips, and then raises to 2600. I don't play these stakes that often, it's tough to flop quads, and even more rare to get raised twice in the same hand while having the absolute nuts. This is an unbelievable feeling. Let's just take a second to enjoy this and hit the like and subscribe buttons. We've made the maximum. Yes, the button still has another 2400 in the stack, but there's no way that he can call a shove even if he has pocket nines for what we know is the second nuts because it's too likely that I'll have queen nine, queen eight, or queen seven for a better full house and I wouldn't bluff or re-raise with anything worse. Still, we have to go for it. I put in the inevitable all-in re-raise for 5000 effective. The button can't believe it. He must not have been raising as a bluff on the river because he doesn't snap fold. I get the sense that he knows he's beat, He's got to see it though. He tosses in a calling chip. We've officially made the most that we could possibly make. We never find out what the opponent had. It must have been either Jack-10, Pocket 9s, or Pocket 8s. They're all pretty similar in this instance because they don't beat the hands that I'm representing. It's an insane $13,000 pot that comes our way. Earlier on, it seemed like I was destined to lose every chip that I had in front of me. I was stuck several thousand dollars and a favorite to be down 10,000. We got some magic in two separate hands with pocket queens to now be up 6,000 on the session. The day is completely turned around. It isn't over either. In this one, we've got pocket fives in the small blind. A handful of players have left our table to play the uncapped 1020 game that's just opened, including the player who just attempted the bluff against us. Some new players have arrived, including a player who straddles from under the gun. Middle position opponent limps in, 
The hijack calls for 20. We don't want to reopen the pot, and it's fine if we have more opponents, so I don't mind going multi-way. We call for 15 more. The big blind calls. He's a new player as well. The under the gun straddler needs to punish us limpers. He raises to 120. The middle position player calls for 100 more. It's too much for the hijack. He folds. I don't mind playing an inflated pot with a hand that'll be easy to play post-flop. I call for 100 more. The big blind also calls. We're going four ways to the flop. Hit the like button on the count of three for some extra run good. Ready? One, two, three. The flop comes 5-5-3 five, five, with two hearts. Because of you, we flop quads in what's already a pretty big pot. I check, hoping someone has an overpair or is going to fire while drawing dead. The big blind checks. The under the gun straddler was the pre-flop raiser. He's our best candidate to take a shot. He bets 200. That'll be ours soon. The player in middle position has no regrets in life except for entering this pot. He folds. There's no way that we'll be check raising on this street. I call to keep the bluffs in. The big blind folds. It's down to heads up. I'm rooting for a high card that'll give our opponent whatever he thinks he needs. Instead, the turn is the three of clubs. It's one of the worst cards that we could have gotten because it's really unlikely that our opponent has a three. In his mind, we could have one. Now that the board is double paired, if the opponent bets, a call from me will look incredibly suspicious. It won't look like I've got a flush draw. It'll look like I've got a boat or better. I check, someone expecting the turn card to freeze the opponent under the gun, isn't ready to give up just yet. He bets 400 and is 100% drawing dead now. The turn was a blank. I'd flat this bet with hopes of getting an opportunity to check jam the river. I think the river will check through at an extremely high percentage if I called though. No matter what I do, it'll be a tough task to get more money from the opponent. I raised to a thousand on this street to try and make it look like I'm bluffing with either a flush draw or maybe a straight draw. Ideally, this check raise would look odd and either induce a call from an overpair or even ace high or possibly induce a bluff shove. Maybe the plan is working out to perfection as the opponent asks to get a count on my stack. I think I have you covered. There's no better feeling in poker than when you have the nuts and the opponent is clearly considering jamming it on you while you know that he has zero outs. I suppose a slightly better feeling would be if he actually does jam on you. In this case, he folds. It's easy to beat myself up over that one and wish that I had called instead. Perhaps I pulled the trigger a little too early. Calling and then leading the river for a smaller medium amount, almost regardless of the card, would have been a pretty interesting play too. It's not that often that I flop quads. We still win a good chunk to increase our profit to over 4,700. In this one, we've got pocket threes under the gun. I raised to 15. The button calls, the small blind calls as well. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes king, king, three with two spades. I immediately hang up the phone with the sales representative from Bass Pro Shops after telling him, thanks, but I've already got a boat. Small blind checks, I put in a sneaky check. The button also checks. The turn is the eight of clubs. This excites the small blind, he bets 15. It's time for us to make our move. I raise to 50. That's too much for the button. He folds. The small blind isn't deterred. He calls for 35 more. Maybe he's got trips. The river is another three. We make quad threes for the second time today. I've never made quads twice in the same session before. It's pretty amazing. Small blind checks. He only has 380 left in the stack. If he has a king, he's never folding to a jam. If he has a missed flush draw, he can't call a bet anyway. I rip it in. Small blind apparently has air and folds immediately. I did river quads there. We're in level 22. There are less than 100 players left. And I've got some additional people that I want to shout up hard. We pick up pocket sevens in the big blind. James Carroll raises to 125,000 from the cutoff. He's another one of these superstar players that we're going to have to battle with. I defend the big blind for 65,000 more. Nothing has gone our way since the big double up two hours ago, so the stack is down to 2,450,000. We're heads up out of position against a WPT main event winner with over 5 million in live earnings. The flop comes 873 all spades. We've got middle set on a highly coordinated board. I check to James. I know that he knows that this flop will smash my big blind defend range, given that it contains middling and low cards that are all one suit, yet he bets 100,000 anyway. I have an important decision to make. I can put in the check raise now, but I wouldn't be fist pumped getting it in if I got jammed on. I wouldn't want to get called, then have a spade come out, and have to check fold. If the opponent is bluffing with complete air, we don't necessarily want to chase him off either. I call to keep the pot more manageable and conceal our strength. The turn is the ten of clubs, so some straights get there, and pocket tens now has us beat. I check once more. 
James comes in with a much larger bet sizing of 525,000. I'm surprised because this is another card that connects with the board that's theoretically good for our big blind defend range, even after calling a flop bet, and James isn't afraid. If we call, we'll have 1.7 million behind, it'll be about a pot sized bet. This isn't a great situation for the cutoff to bluff, so there's at least a decent chance that we're behind at the moment. I don't want to jam and risk getting snap called by a flush. I flat, hoping to see one of the 10 cards that'll help us improve. The river is the best one of those 10. It's the seven of hearts giving us quads and a huge pot. It's hard to contain my excitement as I check. James doesn't look to be concerned about the board pairing. He does an inventory check, cuts out chips, and bets 900,000 that'll eventually be coming to us. We only have 800,000 on top of that. I put in the check raise shove, which would be suicidal if we didn't have at least the ace high flush. James is in shock as he knows he's run into a monster, but it isn't that much more for him to call. He goes deep into the tank. It seems likely that he flopped a flush. After a long deliberation, he makes the fold. This is when we get the chance to pull the camera out. I let James know that he made a great lay down. He confirms that he indeed flopped a flush and then does an amazing job to get away from it on the river. We do well to avoid getting our stack in bad, correctly assess the situation that the opponent likely wasn't bluffing, display some patience, and we get rewarded at the end. Yeah. All the sevens. Check call flop, check call turn, check jam. Things weren't going that well for almost the entire second level. To get this win at a key moment is a giant boost to get some momentum back on our side. Ace Queen Offsuit comes back to taunt me once more with blinds at 15,000, 30,000. I almost don't want to see it. 50 players remain, a player who started the day third in chips with nearly 1.5 million, hasn't gotten anything going and appears to be steaming after a hand that he just lost. He opened jams from middle position for 410,000. It'd be for a good chunk of my stack if I call. We have to think about it in terms of blinds though, it's less than 14 big blinds. He could be shoving with plenty of worse aces than ace queen. I reshoved to isolate the opponent. We keep our streak alive today of getting it in good, or at least even. The opponent has ace eight offsuit. Last time, we got it in as a favorite in a similar situation with Ace Queen offsuit and lost. This time, it's not much of a sweat. Yeah. Running arts. Oh. Oh. Quads, wow. God, you better get that on your blog, yeah, man. Yeah. I will. <laughs> the deck tries to make amends for that runner on our heart hand and giving my opponent a full house with Queen 9 by giving us runner on our quads here. We knock out a player in 50th and add to our stack to get to 1.4 million. A few hands later, Harp opens up. Under the gun with uh, blinds at 6k, 12k. So he opens 25k. Player in middle position calls. I'm in the big blind, pocket fours. I flat. Flop comes 4-4 four, four, deuce. I check. Harp bets 30k. Player in middle position calls. I'm like not quite sure what I want to do. I decide I'm going to go ahead and raise tiny. So I raise a 70k. Uh, under the gun folds. Uh, middle position player calls. I figure he has like a middling, like middling pocket pair, like from eights to jacks. Uh, turn is the seven of spades, I believe, to seven. And I actually bet 60K. So I, I bet even smaller than I did on the flop. I just really, really wanted to keep him in there. And uh, he tank calls again. River is a king. He is about, I think a little bit less than 200K in chips. And uh, I just ripped it in, and then he tank, tanked for a few minutes and ended up folding. I showed him the quads, and he had he had pocket eights. And so, uh, got a good amount of value there. Minutes later, it's our turn with the Jiggities. We're on the button, a player in middle position raises to 15. The cutoff calls. We're gonna take a similar approach as we did in the previous hand with a three bet to 60. The initial raise is smaller, there's one less opponent, and we're in position, which is why our three bet sizing here is only half the amount that we three bet with queens. The middle position player calls for 45 more, the cutoff folds, it's down to heads up, the flop is much better for jiggities, it comes jack jack, six rainbow, we flop quads in a three bet pot. What happens next is almost as unbelievable as the flop. The action's on the opponent first, and he hates the community card so much that he forgoes his option to check, and instead, I kid you not, Open folds. How do you do that? Just open muck? Oh my god. That hurts. All right. Drag that back to the top. Yeah. Yeah, you should have shown him the It's really good. Yeah. In all my time playing poker, I've never seen that before. We don't get paid. 
it's at least always fun to get every Jiggity in the deck together for a reunion. Now some of you might be thinking, oh wow, you won with a set of aces. Not very impressive. It's easy to win when you're holding cards that good. For those people, you're not going to like this next hand. We get pocket aces again. This time we're in the big blind. A player in middle position opens a 30. I have no idea why he decided to raise when I have pocket aces. I can only speculate that he's involved in some kind of Brewster's Millions type of scenario in which he has to squander a fortune, and this is his attempt to gamble away 5% of that right now. We're lucky enough to be in a spot to take advantage of this. I raised to 120, making it much easier for the middle position player to lose quicker so that he can focus on running for mayor. Of course the opponent calls, we're heads up out of position and the flop comes ace jack 9 rainbow, we've got top set again. There are a variety of ways that the middle position player could have connected, I down bet to 100. Middle position player calls, maybe he has a jack or possibly even a set of jacks, he could also have a hand like king queen suited. I'm feeling pretty good about what we've got, but we already had a set of aces in this session, 3 aces isn't cool anymore. You know what's cool? 4 aces. We've got quads and a 3 bet pot. The only issue is that it's going to be really tough to make money unless our opponent has pocket jacks or is willing to turn a hand like king queen or queen 10 into a bluff. I give him some rope with a check. We don't get the player to bite. He checks back. The river is the six of diamonds. It's a complete blank. I don't see how I'll be able to make much money on this board given how it's been played. I'm not going to overbet this. Instead, I make a tiny bet of 50 to make it look like a blocker bet. This will certainly get a call to someone holding a jack or even a 9, but what I'm really hoping to do with this sizing is induce a bluff from a missed straight draw. I want to appear as if I'm afraid of being beat, and I'm naming my price. Instead of raising, the opponent calls, we turn over the nuts for the win. Ooh. I would have called up to about a buck 50. Yeah. It's an interesting situation that doesn't come up that often when you actually have too good of a hand and you're trying to get max value. I'm glad to at least have gotten an extra 50. The opponent would later tell me that he had a jack. It's great to run this good, we're up about 12.50 on the day. The very next hand we're dealt pocket eights on the button, the nemesis who shoved on us the previous two hands we've gone over completely disregards my advice to run and hide, he limps in from under the gun plus one, the cutoff raises to 40. I call, the action's on the big blind who slow rolled me earlier, we've already determined that he doesn't like the amount 40, he does what he wants. Depending. No, we get a... <laughs> it's four of those. It's four, four of those. Really? Four. Easy, 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 please, easy. <laughs> please. Yeah, boy. We've got quite the cast of characters here. I feel like we're in poker's version of SNL's Jeopardy, and the big blind is Sean Connery. Under the gun plus one calls, so both players that I have to get revenge on are in there. We're going four ways to the flop in position. The big blind emphatically checks dark. The dealer puts out king eight six with two clubs. We flop middle set in a multi-way pot. Under the gun plus one checks. Cutoff checks, this is such a great situation, I bet 110. The big blind gets the chip denominations wrong, but ultimately gets the right amount out there, and he does it just for me. One, one ten. Just for the blue eye. The other player that I need to crush, Min raises the 220, is the second hand in a row that he's raised me on the flop, and the third time in the last 15 minutes, the cutoff folds, I'm going to try and get as much money in now as possible. I re-raised to 500. The big blind isn't afraid. He makes the call. Under the gun plus one only has 640 total, yet he calls as well and leaves himself with 140 behind. This is already a massive pot. There are so many cards that I won't be happy to see. The eight of hearts is not one of them. We drill quads with piles of money in the middle. Both players are likely drawing dead. The big blind checks. Under the gun plus one jams for his remaining 140. This actually puts me in kind of a weird spot. I want to extract as much money as I can out of the big blind since he has about 13.50 in his stack, but I don't want to raise so much that he folds. In a multi-way pot, after I 3-bet on the flop and put in a raise on the turn when someone has already shoved, my line is going to look a lot like I have a boat. So I'd expect the big blind to fold to larger sizings, knowing that if he has ace-5 of clubs, for instance, that he likely won't have any outs. I grab my yellow bird to release it back in the wild where it belongs, but I only bet 500 of it to milk him, build up a side pot, and entice a call or potentially a bluff if the big blind decides a trip eights is a good hand for him to rep. The opponent slides in a call. There's a significant side pot that takes some time for the dealer to sort out. I suppose there's a tiny chance that the big blind has a king. There's a much better chance that he has clubs. I'm rooting for one on the river. The dealer puts out the seven of hearts. The entire pot is going to us eventually. It's just a matter of whether or not the rest of the big blind stack will be included in it. He checks. I've only got one move that makes sense. I shove for 850 effective. The big blind must have had a draw. He almost immediately folds. We turn over the quads. I'm excited to show everybody and win the pot. 
especially since things haven't been going particularly well for me over the previous 10 sessions or so. Looks like we're back to moving in the right direction and the other players at the table are very cool about it. You got two pairs, eight eight. Two pairs. <laughs> That's damn good hand. I like that hand. The yellow bird is returned to us and the rest of the chips in the middle follow soon after. The sweet old man didn't run and hide. My patience to wait for a better spot pays off. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster, but we're up about 2,500 on the session. Here I've got pocket sixes in the cutoff. Onto the gun limps in. If there were two limpers, I'd likely limp in myself. With only one, I raised a 40. Rob three bets to 140 on the button. Onto the gun folds. Historically, I've won 100% of the pots that I've played against Rob, making this call a no-brainer. I put in an additional 100. We're heads up, out of position. If you'd like to see us smash the flop, get out your hammers, and let's all pound the like button at the same time on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. It's king eight six rainbow. We've got middle set in a three bet pot against someone who's been overly aggressive towards us. I check. Let's be up against aces or ace king one time. The player unexpectedly checks back. Maybe has something like queens, jacks, or ace queen. The turn is another six. We've collected all of them. I don't want to check and have this check back again. It could be difficult for me to extract value out of hands like second pair or ace high. I bet 120 to entice a light call or possible bluff. The button calls. The river is an ace. I check because this should connect well with the button's three bet range. He can potentially bet for value or maybe he has something much weaker and will believe it's a good card for him to turn into a bluff. Ultimately, he checks back. I turn over the nuts. I wish I could have gotten a little bit more money. Rob shows that he three bet me with king queen offsuit. He flopped top pair and surprisingly checked back then got a great river card to bail him out, helping him minimize his loss. We still win a pot of over $500. Rob would pay time for everyone too, which is a super cool move that I rarely see anyone voluntarily do. I'll have to pay that move forward someday. We're back in the small blind, this time with King Jack suited. It's another straddle pot. The player in middle position limps in with the short stack. I call for eight more. The action's on the under the gun straddler. She raises to 35. I'm glad she didn't make it more. The middle position player calls. I call as well. We go three ways to the flop, out of position. It comes jack, jack, six with two diamonds. We've got trip jigs. A check to the aggressive pre-flop raiser. She checks, middle position player checks. Well, this is not going how I hoped. The turn is the five. Perhaps checking a second time will induce a bluff. It doesn't. Under the gun checks, middle position player checks as well. The river is another jack. We've collected all the jiggities in the deck. I'm glad they're all accounted for. Now, how the heck do we make money on this since it seems like no one has anything? I don't want to risk it checking through again. I bet 75. Maybe someone will look me up light because I'm either going to have quads or nothing a lot of the time. And I've already checked twice. Come on under the gun. Call me with a high card. You know you want to. She does not. She folds. The middle position player folds as well. Make quads. Quads it is. Oh, I almost saw that. Would have been nice. I was hoping you were. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Making big hands, so I'm happy, but that feeling subsides because I'm not able to win big pots, so I'm a little annoyed. Maybe I'm bipolar, but I'm not. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? A few orbits later, we have pocket fours on the button. We had a set with them earlier. Maybe we can make another one. I raised to 30. Small blind calls. He's a new player at the table. We're heads up. The flop comes ace five three. It's tough to make a set every time, and we obviously don't make one here. We actually make quads. The real flop is ace four four. I'm hitting tons of huge hands this session. Poker's lots of fun today. Small blind checks. The board is not connected. I don't want to scare off the opponent by betting in case he doesn't have an ace. I check back. The turn is the king of hearts. At least there's some more draws out there. Gets better because the opponent bets 50. Out of respect, take a moment of silence for the opponent since he's drawing dead. It's also a good time for you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you do, I'll tell you what happens next. That was very cool of you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I raised a 130. Please don't fold, dude. He doesn't. He makes the call. I hope that he gets whatever he needs, whether it's a heart or some other big card. The river is the eight of clubs. No draws get there. Not ideal. The small blind checks. It's very unlikely that my opponent will be able to call bet of any sort. I put out 340 hoping that the dude will have an ace and he'll think I'm trying to get him off a chop or perhaps he'll think that I'm bluffing with a hand like Jack Ten of Hearts. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I'm not bluffing, I haven't. Small blind thinks just long enough for it to appear like he has a real decision before folding. We flop quads on that one. I'm excited, the table's excited, I'm running good. 
Got pocket sixes under the gun. I raise to 15. Middle position player calls. Cut off calls. The big blind also calls. We go four ways to the flop. The dealer puts out queen six six. We flop quad sixes. It's been quite a while since I've done that. The big blind checks. I'm almost overwhelmed with excitement. I become more concerned with getting my camera out without drawing too much attention to myself. So I check. Luckily, no one seems to pay attention to it, even though they're all aware that I wasn't planning on filming today. The player in middle position bets 35. The cutoff calls, the big blind folds, I've got the nuts, I'm worried about absolutely nothing. With a dry board out there, I call it a trap. The turn is a 10, I check, the player in middle position bets 75. I get the sense that he's trying to rep a 6, obviously he doesn't have one. The cutoff calls, he may have a queen, I don't want to scare off either opponent, especially if the middle position player is bluffing. The river is an ace. It's mostly a bad card because it may seem to the other players in the hand like I have ace-queen or aces. There's some chance that one of the other players has ace-queen though, which would be great, or somehow king-jack or ace-x of spades. I check, middle position checks, he's the one that I was really hoping would go for it. The cutoff disappointingly also checks. No. It wasn't quite the pot that I was hoping for, still it's a pretty good one. I'm up 1300 at the high point. Here we've got pocket tens and the under the gun straddle. Under the gun plus one opens a 60. I call, the flop comes jack 10 deuce with two diamonds. We have middle set. I check to the pre-flop aggressor, he bets 80. This is a standard spot to check raise. We have the second nuts. The issue is that there are a ton of bad cards that can come on the turn, which might make it tough to play out of position if I raise and get called. Take a slightly different approach and I flat the 80. If I can get a good card, I'll check raise the turn instead. My hand will be very well disguised. If a bad card comes, like the king of diamonds, Pot will be smaller and I can get the showdown cheaper out of position. The turn is obviously the king of diamonds. It's about the worst card in the deck. I'm losing to any flush, ace queen, queen nine, pocket kings, and pocket jacks. Went from having the second nuts to having something much worse than that. I check, the player checks back. The river is another 10. We have quads in one of the biggest games I've ever played. The problem is that I'm not sure what the player will have that he'll be able to call a bet with after he checked the turn. I check to him, hoping that he somehow still played a strong hand and will be able to bet or will attempt a bluff with something weak. Nope. He checks back. I turn over the four tens. He shows that he had a queen jack offsuit with no diamond. There's probably a little bit more money we could have made, but I'm not sure how much. So you make the minimum. On to the next table, and shortly after taking my seat, I pick up pocket aces under the gun. I open to 15. Under the gun plus one calls, the button calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. Everyone's trying to ruin my day. It's gonna be tough though, because we flop what is referred to as quads. That's right, not just clickbait, it actually happened, wouldn't do you like that. Checks to me, I wanna get maximum value, so I bet 300. This bet looks weird, but it's designed to look weird. There's no other way to get paid when you flop a hand this strong. You have to hope one of your opponents either doesn't believe you and calls light, or drilled the flop too. With four other players involved, there's a good chance I'm up against somebody who wants to get on the vlog and is going to call light, or who has pocket fives. Just kidding. Sorry to waste a lot of you guys' time. That didn't really happen. I did flop quads, but I checked the flop. So did everybody else. The turn is a jack. There are two clubs out there now. Checks to me again. This time, I bet 15. It's a tiny bet. I'm hoping to get calls from really weak hands, or perhaps induce a bluff. Under the gun plus one calls, and the small blind calls as well. Not sure what their plan is for the river, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Dealer puts out another five, which is a great card. Small blind checks, I bet 50. Under the gun plus one, surprisingly, raises to 125. The small blind folds, it's back on me. I'm hoping that somehow the opponent has a fifth ace. I re-raise to 300. The opponent folds, I table my hand. Eventually, the player reveals that he had 6-5 of hearts. We end up getting a great run out and win close to the maximum. We get pocket deuces in the hijack. The player under the gun limps in, under the gun plus one raises to 15. I call, the button calls, and the player under the gun calls. The flop comes king five deuce with two clubs. We flop bottom set and we're in a great situation. The opponents check to us, we bet 40. It's slightly more than half the pot. There are multiple opponents, there are some overcards and some draws out there, so there's a good chance someone will be able to call. The under the gun player does call, and the other players fold. The turn is another deuce, not a bad card for us. The player under the gun checks. There are plenty of hands that can call a bet here, so I make it 65 to try and get a call from a king or a flush draw. Unfortunately, he folds, and that was the last interesting hand of the session. 
This is the last hand I'm going to analyze for this episode, and it's by far the most interesting one that I've played during the whole session. The hijack with a starting stack of 623 opens to 20, the cutoff calls, and I call in the big blind with pocket sevens. The flop comes queen seven deuce with two hearts, I check, the hijack bets 40, the cutoff folds, Sometimes I'll call here and I'll wait until the turn to check raise, but I don't want to risk it getting checked through. I make my move now and I raise it to 140. The hijack then goes deep into the tank. He starts sighing with a pained look on his face. At first it seemed like he was going to fold. Then as time went on, I thought he was possibly Hollywooding with top set. Usually people try to mask their emotions as much as they can when they have a genuinely tough decision and in my experience, they more often appear to be distraught on the flop when they have really strong hands and they're trying to deceive you. Eventually he calls though, and he has about 460 remaining. While I was somewhat worried about pocket queens, if he genuinely had a tough decision, then he might have a hand like ace queen, an over pair, or a flush draw. I think all of those hands would reasonably have a hard decision to make when facing a flop raise. The turn is the Jack of Clubs. This is a great card. It shouldn't have helped him much if I was ahead on the flop, except it might have given him a pair or possibly added straight draw outs if he had a hand like Ace-10, Ace-Jack, or Ace-King of Hearts. I bet 200, and he goes through the same motions that he did on the flop, basically. He was grimacing, he seemed like he had a tough decision, and now I don't think he has pocket queens anymore, because he just called. He most likely would have gotten it all in, so I felt like he genuinely had some hard decisions and maybe he didn't know what to do with a hand like ace queen or an over pair or, or a flush draw. The river comes out, it's a seven of hearts, the flush draw gets there and it pairs the board, but we've got quads. I don't want to snap shove even though he only has 263 left. If he did have ace queen or an over pair, he's going to hate this card but we can still get value out of these hands if we size the bet correctly. Even if he has the ace high flush here, he'll be a little bit skeptical of a shove based on how the hand played and the fact that we're still betting once the flush card hits and the board pairs. I bet 200 again and this is an attempt to try and make it look like we have ace queen and we're somewhat scared of the river card. I'm sure some people will disagree with the sizing and I certainly won't fault anyone for that but I believe betting 200 is slightly better and will be more likely to get calls from non-flush hands. He ends up calling and he has king 10 of hearts for the second nut flush. I turn over our hand and the rest of the table gets pretty excited to see quads. Oh my gosh. Oh, I didn't want to believe it. I had every out in the turn. I didn't want to believe the sevens. I didn't want to believe the sevens. I just, I was just, like the only hand that, that made sense was quad seven. So I was like, it's the only hand. It's the only one I was like, you can't have it. You can't have it. And he did. I was like, oh my God. I hit the record button a little bit late on this hand and it picks up on the turn. But I get 9 10 offsuit in the big blind. We went five ways to the flop. The flop was 10 10 8, two spades. It was a flush draw and some straight draws. Check to me. I bet 15 and got three callers. The turn was a 10, giving me quads. A lot of people will slow play here and they'll check, but a lot of times it'll just check through. I think that's a big mistake. So I bet 35 and I got two callers. And the river's is three of clubs, pot's 190, and I decide to bet a little over two thirds pot. I bet 130, hoping to get one caller, maybe someone with an eight. The first player folds and the second player finds a call with pocket sixes. So this is a pretty bad call on the other player's part. But when you're a young kid, people just think you're bluffing. 